Welcome back to the Talking with Taylor podcast. I'm your host, Taylor, where we talk with anyone about anything, and hopefully everyone around the table will listen. Now, I am, man, very excited for our podcast interview uh, today. I've got a uh, got a guy that, hey, it's a brotherhood, man, if you, if you played for Alabama, regardless of if you played when I played in 2011 to 2015, we got Martin Houston, who uh, played back in uh, 92, and man's on the championship team. We got him right here. Mr. Martin Houston, how are you doing? I'm doing great, uh, Taylor, and thank you so much for uh, taking a little bit of time to uh, sit down with me and honored to be on with you. Well, hey, I, I mean, I'm so thankful that you uh, are taking time today to be on, and I know we got a lot of listeners that are excited to hear from you. Well, hey, you're, you're, a, you're a businessman, you're a pastor, or you got another thing uh, on the on the old resume here, you're running for mayor of Tuscaloosa, man. I'm so excited to hear about that, man. So what, what kind of led you to want to run for mayor of Tuscaloosa? Well, well, you know, uh, being a man of faith, I, I would tell you that without a shadow of a doubt, um, it was in obedience to, mm. to God. Um, you know, my life was, was really good and is really good. I shouldn't say was, uh, is really good and, and have a very blessed uh, life here. Uh, things are as good as they've ever been for me personally. Uh, but um, people begin to ask me to consider the run and uh, dating back as far as the summer. And I kept saying, no, no, no. And uh, finally, I uh, got challenged by someone to, to not just pray about it, but to fast and pray and, mm. and, um, and then stop listening to all the noise. And, and I did that. And Part of the reason I probably hadn't fasted sooner, Taylor, you know, some, sometimes uh, you find yourself in situations where you're dealing with something and it's like, I know what the answer is going to be, yeah. but I really don't want that answer. That's right. And that's the way I, I felt <laughs> regarding this. Uh, yeah. but, but once I got past that, why, why do I feel like God called me to do it? Because uh, my, my passion is to serve people, empower people to be the best they can be. Uh, if you meet people or talk to people that know me, uh, I'm an encourager or I, I try to be an encourager uh, and an empower. And I think that I can do this instead of one on one encounters. Yeah, you know, I can do it for a whole city. That's uh, right. And that's that's the reason. Well, you know, I, I think you like we said earlier, you got a great resume. You, you, you've been in every facet of life. Uh, but one facet of life is Alabama football. So before we go any further, I think our listeners want to hear a little bit about Alabama football. So let's talk a little bit about your experience at Alabama. And um, let's talk about, you know, what it was like to play uh, for Coach, uh, Coach Staller. Wow. Uh, experience at Alabama, of course, you know, you're playing for the greatest university uh, uh, athletic program in the history of uh, college football and it was that way when I played and it's that way today and it was that way before I played so uh, that is that is something that if you if you ever put on that crimson jersey uh, you can you can walk out and, and it's going to be hard for anyone to argue with that's right with the statement when you say I played for the greatest program so that that part's really cool I, I wish I could say that I grew up and I always had this dream of playing for for Alabama, but that's not the case uh, for me. Uh, as a matter of fact, everybody thought I was going to Auburn. Oh, yeah. Hey, well, we're glad you didn't. <laughs> yeah, I, I am too. But uh, the, the irony of that is I, I probably went to six or seven Auburn games every year. I mean, I was a Auburn guy. And then NC State kind of snuck in there uh, and, and did a really good job of recruiting me based on degree and, 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 and diploma and opportunity. Uh, but my first time in Tuscaloosa was my official visit because all of the games were in Birmingham my senior year, and uh, I committed that weekend. So, hey, that <laughs> so was... when I tell people I fell in love with Tuscaloosa, it's literally I fell in love with Tuscaloosa uh, on one visit and been here ever since. Well, I love that, you know, and, and that's um, – that's, I think that's a great quality for anyone in this city, and especially a leader like yourself – and especially the position you're running for uh, and, you know, someone who loves this city. I, I think that's a, that's a, that's a big statement. So everyone listening that, 
hey, Martin Houston's not just running for mayor just to run for mayor. He loves this city. He, he loves the people of this city. And um, and I think that that speaks volumes about, you know, why you're running. And, 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 and let's, you know, kind of piggybacking off your football experience. Do you think, I mean, obviously, you know, I'm a student pastor here at Valley View Baptist Church, and I know you've got some connections here with uh, our administrative pastor, Stephen, and uh, Bethany with uh, Save a Life, and I mean, all these great things that uh, you're involved in. But, um, but looking at your football experience, football prepares you for so many things in life. And so right. in what ways do you think playing football all throughout life, not just in college, but playing football all throughout life, and then especially at Alabama, how do you think that's prepared you to be uh, possibly be the mayor of Tuscaloosa? Well, I think there's a lot of, uh, of qualities and traits and characteristics that you pick up as a football player that help you, not just mayor, but in any position, hard work, discipline, uh, sacrifice. Uh, th those are some of those basic qualities that I think a leader uh, should have. I, I think understanding uh, team, uh, understanding how to build uh, teams, how, how to understand how to rally a bunch of different personalities, diversity. I always think about um, football and the teams, Taylor, and you know as well as I do, you take a bunch of guys from a bunch of different places mm -hmm. with a bunch of different personalities, strong-willed, yeah. got their own plan, their own, and, and somehow you have to figure out how do we take all of that and put it into one common goal? And, and I think that, that those traits as a whole helps. Uh, some people have said, hey, we don't need another athlete uh, to, to, to be running for politics and, you know, uh, or, or another coach, et cetera. Well, I played football 30 years ago. That's right. Uh, uh, and, and I've taken those traits and qualities that not quite 30, but feels like it sometimes when I wake up in the morning, <laughs> yeah. almost 30, God. Yeah. <laughs> but, but my point is I've been in the business world for, uh, I've taken those experiences of team building, uh, leadership, goal setting, hard work, discipline, uh, sacrifice, uh, and learned. Uh, how to apply them in leading teams and building teams and building organization. Mm. And, and to me, uh, the city uh, is, you know, just that. It's, it's one of the largest teams in Tuscaloosa yep. uh, with a bunch of different uh, personalities and yep. a bunch of different targets and desires and goals. You need someone who can rally the troops and and get all of those people moving in, in one direction. And that's why I said, hey, we need to raise the bar in Tuscaloosa from good to great mm -hmm. for all the people. And, and, and it gives everybody, it's, that's something that everybody can, can rally behind. I always tell people as a fullback, you know, um, my, when I did my job, when I did my job as a fullback, they never mentioned my name. Mm -hmm. They would always go, great run by Derek Lassick or, <laughs> or, or, or if I blocked the guy coming off the edge and he didn't sack Jay, uh, they would say great pass by Jay Barker. Uh, the, the only time they said my name is if I didn't do my job. So my goal was to, to not have my name called <laughs> over the loudspeaker, unless it was a third and one, fourth and one, something like that. But, right. but I think and that's the role that a mayor uh, uh, should play in his city. He should be helping everybody in his city do their job and, and get their names called and, mm. Uh, the, but you know who knew that I did my job? That's right. The people who I did my job That's for. Right. That, right. It didn't matter what everybody else was saying. You know, when we got to those meeting rooms, the coaches, the teammates, the players, uh, right. they, they knew. And, and that's what I think can happen here. So even though somebody may try to make the sports background a bad thing, it actually, uh, it actually uh, shows that, that I'm willing to do the work and, and make the sacrifices to get the job done. Absolutely. That's, I couldn't agree more. Um, my dad, actually, he coached basketball uh, at Bibb County High School right down the road. And that's where I went to high school for 30 something years. And uh, he actually uh, was mayor of Centerville uh, for four years. And so he had a coaching background, played college ball. And he, 
very similar to you had the same mindset, same background of, Hey, look, I, it's not about me. It's about the team, right? It's about the, it's about the city. It's about the people we surround ourselves with. And, you know, regardless of political opinion, you know, one of the, um, uh, one of the coolest things that I think, um, you know, uh, that I've seen presidents, uh, you know, whether it's, uh, George H. Bush, Bill Clinton, um, uh, Jimmy Carter, and, and President Obama. I remember some of the things that they they would say, uh, and I remember President Obama said this specifically. He said that my my cabinet, I, my presidency, will be as only successful as the people around me are successful. Right. And so, uh, regardless of if you're Republican, Democrat, I think we can all agree on that that our teams that we surround ourselves with are. Um, are successful because of the people around us. And I love your mindset behind yeah. that. So Coach, Coach Stalin used to always say, and I don't know if it was his original quote or if he was quoting someone else, but uh, in that in that old Texas draw, <laughs> if I can be farther than most men, it's because I sit on the shoulders of other great men. And that's mm -hmm. and that's that's reality. Um, if you surround yourself with the right people uh, who are committed, <clears throat> excuse me, who are committed and competent to do their job, uh, and, and then and not that's not, and then allow them to do their job. Uh, okay. It's not just enough to have them committed and competent, but then allow them to do their job. Then I think you just get a lot more uh, accomplished. I know it, it, it's going to sound fair, but I always think about Jesus as an example. Jesus brought in you know twelve guys and. And he empowered them and then he poured into them and then he was gone. Mm -hmm. But what he left in them and what he left behind is still growing to this day. And, and to me, that's the power of a leader is their ability, uh, not just what they do, uh, but what they do to empower the people that they lead and then allow those people to duplicate that. And then that's why you see influence and effect uh, being more positive. Are, the question you ask yourself, are people better because I'm around them? Am I making them better? And then in turn, they're going to end up making you better. And so, you know, that's a, that's yeah. a, that's a great thing. And uh, but, leaders know how to surround themselves with successful people. And they're not afraid of success, of other people's success. They get excited for other people's success. I mean, it sounds yeah. like that, that that is the kind of mayor, the kind of leader that we are going to be uh, hopefully, you know, be, be put in office. And so that's, uh, man, that's, yeah, that's let me, let me can, I, can I say something that you, you were talking about? I wrote, I went to a marriage conference when I was 19 years old. Uh, I was married at 19, playing ball here, been married for 31 years. And I went to a marriage conference and at that marriage conference, they challenged us to write a personal mission statement uh, to be a better husband, father, uh, and community leader. And that mission statement was, if I meet someone, their life will be better off having met me than it would have been otherwise. Mm. Um, and that forces you to notice people, serve people, love people, and empower them. And, and I've done that on a personal level. And the, and the I guess the, the thing that pushed me over the top on deciding to run was after I felt like God was calling me to do it, I had some people challenge me and said, man, you know, uh, maybe God brought you to this point so you don't do that just on a one-off one basis, but that you're able to do that for an entire city. And I believe that that's what I, I, can, I can do, and that's, yes. that's my goal. Hey, you're a, you're a unifier, man. I, I think that's, a, I think that's a, the, the message that we're hearing. And, um, and before we go, a, couple, a few more things, uh, man, I, and I appreciate your time. Um, I know you got a busy schedule coming up for sure, and um, uh, uh, hey, it's about to, it's, it's game time, man. So, it's game time. Uh, yes, sir. It's, it's, it's fourth quarter. That's right. It's fourth or, quarter. Or, or, or as we called it lower gym. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, man. So let's 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 talk a few specifics like we we're talking about earlier. You know what what is just let's give us a few things that you have in your vision for, for this city of, of taking it from good to great. What are some things that that's on your heart, on your mind to do that in this great, and uh, this, in this good city that we want to make great? Well, first of all, I think culture um, is everything. I think the culture in which you create um, is the breeding ground for, for success. And so uh, 
I have, have a five tenant th um, thing that I call truth that I believe will allow that culture to be created. First of all, it's trust uh, between the citizens and their elected officials that they can trust that if they say something, it's going to be heard. Doesn't mean we're going to agree on everything, but at least they they can trust that the elected official, myself and hopefully the entire city elected officials will hear what they're having to say and at least pay attention to it. Then respect, um, when, when you deal with the city uh, and you come into the city uh, for anything, anywhere that regards to who you are, that you will be respected uh, and treated with that, that respect that, that you should have as a citizen and a taxpayer who's paying our Paying our salary. That's right. Uh, unity. I, I think that we need to stop pitting ourselves against each other. Uh, that's something that the whole nation needs. But, but specifically in Tuscaloosa, we need to stop pitting uh, uh, different parts of our city against each other from this zip code to that zip code, this school to that school, this race to that right. race, uh, this party to that party. I just think we need to unify the city because it, uh, of course, there's a scripture, but the house of God, it can't stand. Sure. Uh, and, but even if a house is standing, do you just want to stand in, as a good house or you want to be great? And if a portion of your city doesn't feel like they're included, uh, then you can't be a great city because it's always going to be that side. And then T is the second T is for transparency. I think you have to uh, know that if you come down to city hall, and want to know what's going on uh, with your taxpayer dollars that you you don't have to be able to, you don't have to be Sherlock Holmes to figure out what's going on. You need it needs to be transparent enough for business owners, business leaders, community leaders, and, and an everyday person if they want to know what's happening and how their tax dollars are being spent. You have to create an environment for that to happen. And then age is help, man. I mean, let, let's build a city that helps each other. Uh, the city when it can help. Uh, but also create that culture that private uh, industry and communities will be there to help each other when one of our own needs help. So that's kind of the culture thing. And then real quick from a kind of a, people always want to, Hey, what's your platform type of thing? And, uh, and uh, you know, business and economy uh, economic development has to be at the top. And what I mean by that is we have to diversify from, uh, more than just manufacturing. We can't just be uh, and growing in that area. Uh, we, we, I would love to see us bring in some, some technology jobs. Uh, I would love to see us bring in some uh, other higher paying jobs that, that people, we can train people and develop people uh, to take on. What exact jobs those are at this point, I, do, I don't have that list, but uh, you have to do that. And then educational equality. Um, right now, um, unless something has changed, two thirds of our schools are failing, uh, and we don't need to lower the standard. And uh, from what's happening at one school, we need to raise the bar that all three schools uh, are are passing. And that if you, as a citizen, want to live anywhere in this city, you don't have to worry about your child getting a good education. Uh, and and that, that, that's the twofold. I, I think that's the, the system needs to, to do that. The city needs to do that. And the community needs to do that. Uh, I mean, all three need to be vested in that happening. I don't think it's going to happen if just the schools get involved. I don't think it's going to happen if just community. I think all three need to be working together to create that. And then safe and secure community. Uh, people are, are worried about crime and uh, their property and their protection. Uh, and so we have to make sure that we have safe and secure communities by having a, a well-trained, uh, ad adaptive uh, police department, well-trained uh, fire and first responders. Uh, and to do that, I think we're going to have to do some diversity, uh, you know, bring in some more diversity uh, without lowering standards. Uh, if anything, raise the bar, but uh, go out and find people who feel like this is a calling, uh, a career to protect and to serve, not just uh, arrest and, yeah. <laughs> and harass and, and change that profile within the community. The community a lot of times has, a, has that image of what's happening within the, 
the police. I, so I think you need to get the police as well as the community on board. And then transportation and infrastructure is a huge uh, part of uh, what we need to do as well. Uh, I think we could have a more robust busing system. I think we need to make sure that our infrastructure in Tuscaloosa uh, is where it needs to be. And then just um, I, Another thing, kind of mis miscellaneous things I would love to see is more affordable housing, uh, maybe financial wellness initiative uh, to train people, not just give money, but train people what to do with that money and how to use uh, the resources they have. So that's just a few things that, that are on my list to do. Um, but the biggest thing is make sure that everybody in the city feels like if they wake up in Tuscaloosa as a citizen, Taylor, they're going to have an opportunity. If they do what they're supposed to do, they're going to have uh, an opportunity to eat the fruit of the success of Tuscaloosa. And I don't know if we have a lot of people that feel that way. Well, Martin, I, I tell you, uh, just this interview today, uh, I think the citizens need to hear this, need to hear your plan, and hopefully we can get get the word out there and we're going to we're gonna post this as many places as we can. Well, well Martin, uh, I'm just honored that you were on the podcast today and just honored to honored to meet you, man. It's, it's cool to, cool to see you. Uh, well, man, is there, uh, is there anything, uh, one last thing you'd like to leave our listeners with before we go? Well, yeah, I, I think it, it's time for a change. The definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. Uh, if, if you feel like uh, that there's no opportunity to improve with change, then stay the same. Mm -hmm. If you feel like there's an opportunity that change could happen uh, and change would make things better, then let's, let, let, let's vote for change on March 2nd. Uh, one of the things I want everybody to know is that they're all going to have a seat at the table and their voice is going to be heard. Uh, and the first place for their voice to be heard, uh, if they feel like it hasn't been, is to go out and vote on March 2nd. And then if they would, they want to find out more about myself uh, or donate, they can go to HoustonForTuscaloosa.com, HoustonForTuscaloosa.com and go slash donate in there if you want to donate. I wish I could do this thing for free, but I have to raise money to, That's right. That's right. to get it out there. But thank thank, thank God for places like you that let's, let us get our message out uh, for free. Uh, but a lot of these places, you have to pay them. So yep. if hey. you want to support, your vote counts, right. uh, your money counts, and your support counts, and I'll take all three. Well, Martin, hey, we what we'll do is we're going to have everything in the bio in the link on YouTube so people can go right to there. We'll have links accessible for everyone to go check out. And, uh, Martin, thanks so much for being on today. And, uh, guys, thank you so much for listening to the Talking with Taylor podcast.